Hi there, Nick Raider here with another cavalry tutorial. This is another video in the constraints series, and in this one we'll be going over the component constraint. As with all these, command period, control period to find our constraints. Let's go with component constraint. And within the component constraint, there's two different constraint types. The first one is a point. Second one is an edge. You can also choose none if you want. And like with all of our constraints, it takes a target. There's a position shape, out position, rotation strength, out rotation, index, normal bias, offset. But let's take a look at what that's doing. I'll create a star and increase that radius. And then let's also create a circle. And the circle, will I'll choose that to be a red color. Okay, so we'll take our star shape, connect it into our component constraint, click target. We'll take our out position from the component constraint and send that over to our lip shape. Click on position. It goes to the very first point on our star shape here. So in our component constraint, when we change our index, it changes the point that circle sticks to. It'll go all the way around. This normal bias moves it away from or towards the average angle of that point. The best way to figure it out, honestly, is to just try it. And then offset here changes offset based on X position. So if we want to always 200 pixels to the left, then no matter which index we go to, it'll be 200 pixels to the left. Okay, so let's try a more practical example. I'm going to delete all of these layers and create a text layer. And we'll call this one subscribe, because why not? Change the weight to black, increase the font size. Let's center it and go with, let's center it and go with bottom. I'll lower that down a little bit. Okay, and the next thing I'll do is under string manipulators, plus button, add a string manipulator, open that up, click the manipulator drop down, go down to resize text. So as we drag this percentage slider, our text grows. And actually, I want to change the alignment to left. I'll just drag that over. So as it types on, the word stays in the same spot. So what I'm going for is I want to have a cursor that animates along with however many letters there are in the word. All right, so let's work backwards from that. Our component constraint requires an input target. If we connect the text into our input target, let's make the rectangle shape red. So when I take our out position, and drag it over to the rectangle shapes position. Then as we scroll through our indexes, it picks each point on each letter, at least up till a certain point, then it looks like it gives up. But what I want is the cursor to stick to the very end of the word, no matter how long it goes or how short it goes. So I will delete that connection from target and I'll make, I'll shape this up to be a proper cursor. So pretty thin, fairly tall. And I'll even add a align deformer and set that to align all the way at the bottom to get the bounding shape of this text. We can use a bounding box. Now we can connect our text into the bounding box, input shape. We can't see anything yet, so we'll create another rectangle and this will be our like reference. And now at the bounding box and our reference rectangle, I'll take the size and connect that to the size of our reference rectangle. So now it's the same size as our text. And then let's even connect the position of our bounding box to the position of our reference rectangle. Now this rectangle will stay in the same position and the same size as our source text. I'll hide that. This reference shape here will now connect into our component constraint under target. And then we'll move our index down to zero. So that's the bottom left-hand corner. So our anchor point on this cursor is at the bottom. Change that to one. And now we have a cursor at the bottom right-hand side of the text at all times. So as I change the string manipulator, the cursor stays right there at the end of the text. But in the component constraint, I can set the offset over a little bit. So it has space for a cursor. And there we go. So we have cursor typing text with this percentage slider of our string manipulator using the component constraint. I'll group that all together and I'll label this one. That's our first example, hide it. The next thing we talk about, see under this constraint type, there's an edge. So let's take a look at that. Component constraint, switch that to edge. This one has all the same options, except it also has this edge bias. 
So this constraint animation that I had made has this triangle that animates from the left to the right over the top of the text. Just a little accent animation. But I'm going to show you how I made that. Okay, through a little movie magic, I went ahead and created our bounding box rig for us. So I'll hide this reference rectangle. And now to add a polygon, change the sides to three, set that radius down quite a bit and set the scale to negative one. And then last thing I'll do is create an align deformer. Set the align deformer's Y to negative one. So that sets our anchor point at the very bottom of the triangle. And then let's make the polygon shape red. All right, all that done. Now let's take our reference rectangle, connect that into our component constraint target. And then under our component constraint, we'll connect the out position into the position of our polygon. So that sets it down here at the bottom. The index does the same thing. So there's the bottom edge, there's the right edge, and there's the top edge, which is what we want. And then the edge bias, if I click and slide, this slides from zero to one, all the way along the edge from point to point. So in this case, it takes us from zero, the far right, slide the edge bias over to one, then the triangle moves over to the top left. So to animate that, you just animate this edge bias and there you have it. So now, whatever the text is, it'll change where this triangle ends up. So I'll go ahead and change that here. Let's change this over to subscribe and the triangle changes. Change it back to constraints, changes again. Okay, so that is the component constraint, both points and edges. A quick tip while you're using it is you wanna choose your constraint type before you start making any connections because as soon as you change it and you already have a connection. So here I have the reference rectangle set as our target and the out position set to our shape. And so when I change this to point, you'll see that both of those connections disappear. So you'll wanna know what the constraint type is before you start making those connections. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. Check out the other videos in this constraint series. Please drop a comment if you like the video, if you have questions, suggestions. Thank you.